60s. I truly believe that any two people can be married almost without exception. And not only be married, because y'all can say, well, Pastor Washington, any two people can walk down the aisle. What happens when, when the makeup isn't there anymore and the long train on the dress has disappeared? I've seen situations where a helicopter comes and picks the bride and groom up and one, one job. That's, that's all you have to do. And so if you have an issue and problem with that, you know what I tell them? Genius up in here. Yes. Now uh, imagine what that does. If I go out through that day and somebody else says, "Oh, Dwayne, you know you're, you're so smart. You're such a genius." I'm like, "Yeah, I, I know. You know my wife told me this morning. Yeah, I'm glad you figured it out though." But you know, imagine what would happen if she didn't. Mm -hmm. And everybody else says it, but your wife. Yes, mm -hmm. that's not good. Because mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you, it felt good. It felt good. Oh, you're, you're so smart. You can figure it out. She told me something the other day. You can figure it out. You always do. Yeah. In awe of. Oh, it feels so good. Now, let me help you with something. Does that mean that Pastor Washington thinks he's perfect? Absolutely not. I, I am not the picture of perfection. Do I think I'm a genius? It is what it is. The thing is, your wife talking to you in a way that is reverencing or being in awe of you. I remember one time, and the Bible talks about submitting. When we're talking about sacrifices, it's still about sacrifice. It's what love looks like in marriage is sacrifice. And if we look at, um, if we look at even Ephesians 5, as we start off, it says, Be therefore followers of God as your children and walk in love. As Christ has also loved us, hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice, say a sacrifice, sacrifice. to God for a sweet smelling savor. Sacrifice. We're still talking about sacrifice. But, but understand that as a wife, learning how to submit to your husband. And people think, well, I'm not a doormat. I didn't ask you to be a doormat. I, you know, I, I've got opinions. We definitely want your opinions because you are there to help the family. Well, well, Pastor, what do you mean by submitting? I, I will tell you that. L let's, let's substitute that so you can understand it a little better. Let's call it acquiescing or yielding. Well, Pastor, what does that mean? Well, imagine that you are in a vehicle. And there's another vehicle that's coming. You, you could be in a Bentley. And it could be a, a Yugo that's coming up. But they have the right of way. And you stop and you let them in front of you, or you stop and you let them go in front of you, that you yielded mm -hmm. to something. Does that mean that you don't have a Bentley? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that you're less than? Mm -hmm. It just means that you yielded, you acquiesced. You gave space for, you gave room for. Give room for your man to be a man. Yield. Don't try to butt heads all the time and run everything. Yield. Say yield. Yield. Whenever, whenever we walk up to a door, my wife gives me space to be her husband. Because you know what she does? <laughs> that door will never have her fingerprints on it. Because she gives me space. She yields. Can she open the door? Of course. God gave her two good hands. <laughs> Ten phenomenal phalanges. Fingers. She's well able and capable to open the door for herself. A am I diminishing her as a woman because I walk and open the door for her? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm honoring her. Mm -hmm. Saying that I, I want to do this for you. I want you to go before. I, I want you to have an easier life. There's some doors that I want to open for you in your life. Amen. That'll preach right there. there and so when she walks up to a place... She will allow me, she will yield, she will acquiesce, she will submit to the process and allow me to come in and open that door. 
So much, in fact, that my children have told me that there's times when I'm not around and mama is driving. In some kind of way, she ends up walking up to the driver's side or to the, to the passenger side and just waiting because she's expecting that to happen. She tells me about times sometimes she'll get on an elevator and she'll just wait there. And, and next thing you know, the elevator door is closed and she's not paying attention and it opens right back up. She never thought about hitting the button because it's always handled. Mm -hmm. Whenever we pull up to a gas station, I, I, y'all, I don't, this is a pet peeve. I don't understand how you are a well able uh, man and there's nothing wrong with you and all your, all, all, all your situations work right and your wife is pumping gas mm -hmm. and you, you work, your hands work, your, your feet work, your, and you're pumping gas. Wives, if your husband's with you, you shouldn't even think about getting out. Mm -hmm. You should sit there with your seatbelt securely fastened. <laughs> with your seat in the upright position <laughs> and give him space to be a man. I want you to watch something. I, I, can, I can look at a woman and I can tell how she's been treated. I can tell. If I see a woman walking up to a, a door with her, with her man and she just automatically grabs for it, that tells me something. Right there. That tells me something. I, there, there's sometimes I'll reach to grab things and they're, not, they're so used to not having this that they'll try to take it from me. Every now and then I'll open the door for a woman and she get mad at me because I open the door. I can open the door for myself. <laughs> and you're going to. <laughs> for the rest of your life. Learn how to give space. We won't get through all of this today and that's okay. Learn how to give space. Learn how to acquiesce. Learn how to yield. That doesn't mean you're not great. I remember one time there was a major decision that we needed to make in our family. And I sat down with my wife to get her opinion on it. And she said something that kind of messed me up. She said, whatever you decide. I'm sure you'll make the right decision for the family. And she went back to doing what she was doing. <laughs> it's on me. It was early on in our marriage too. And I learned, ah, I guess it is on me. Does she have a say so? Absolutely. I was talking to a wife not too long ago and she said, you know, I, I don't, she had a problem. She said, you know, the, there's some decisions that he makes and, and he just makes them and I don't think that's fair. You know, he shouldn't have the ultimate decision. You shouldn't have got married. <laughs> that's not fair. I said, you know what? You don't have a problem with that anywhere else. When you go to your job, your CEO has the ultimate decision and you're not complaining to me about that. When you go to your, 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 your um, school, the principal has an ultimate decision and you're not saying nothing about that. The, you go to court and that judge got the ultimate decision and you say okay and follow them on in the jail. <laughs> but when you come home, the only relationship that you have chosen in your life, it's the only one. You don't choose your children. I, mean, I hit the jackpot, but you don't choose your children. You choose your wife, you choose your husband. That's a choice. So you chose the one to follow, the only one. And you got a problem with that. Could it be a problem with him or could it be a problem with the fact that you don't know how to choose? And if that's the case, you need to pray for that and follow that man. Learn how to submit. Learn how to be in awe of. I don't care if he just cut the yard good. Boy, you, I seen you out there cutting that yard. You were getting it, boy. I seen muscles glistening. I got a little excited. Here's some lemonade. You need anything else? I am here for you, because I'm telling you, I ain't never seen nobody cut a yard like that. <laughs> I don't care if it's zigzags and everything else. It don't matter. <laughs> I better be straight next time. <laughs> he could be washing the dishes. You come in there, you know, boy, I hear folks can't get their man to wash a dish. You in here just knocking them out. I am so proud of you. Can I rub your shoulders while you do it? He'll be in there for three hours doing dishes. dishes. Knocking them out. You get up two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey bro, let me hit you back, man. Uh, nah, I gotta knock these dishes out. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> <laughs> 
I told a woman one time, she was complaining about her man and we're getting ready to get out of here. She was complaining and she said, oh, he's just always on the couch and just playing video games and da 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 da. And even when I come in, he never helps me with the groceries. I gave her a few things to say next time. She said, oh, that'll never work. You don't understand my man. All men are the same, I understand. You gotta meet him. I don't have to meet him. Trust me, this is gonna work. I said, when it works, you don't have to say it in front of everybody because I don't want you to you know, be embarrassed. You can just come tell me. Just do that right there. That's all I need. <laughs> Whatever, it ain't gonna work. Okay. Mm -hmm. I gave her some things that work. She went home, did them that day, came back the next day. You will not believe this. <laughs> I came in with the groceries. He jumped up, went and got the grocery from the car. A whole night, I ain't had to ask him. You're a genius. <laughs> I know my wife told me this morning. <laughs> I simply told her when you come in the house and he's sitting on the couch, because he will be playing a video game, just say, Jim, you know, I was getting the groceries and this little old bitty skinny dude was trying to put all the groceries in the car. I was laughing at him because I, I had to go on and tell him because he thought he was really doing something. I got a man at home that's so strong, he'll knock these things out. He, you should have seen him struggling and his legs just buckling. And I just thought about you and how big and strong you are. And I, I, just, I literally just went into thinking how you would throw those in there without a problem because, I mean, you just, mm, I got a little excited just thinking about it. Anyway, let me get the rest of these out the car. Joker jumped up. Went and got him out the car. Learn how to be in awe of your man. Amen.